As we start another school year, students will once again face a variety of stresses. COVID, just one of them. Some teenagers find trouble that stretches beyond school and into a courtroom. Tonight, CBS 4's Karen Morfitt highlights the problem and an alternative approach to solving it. Many Colorado schools take a zero tolerance approach when it comes to disciplining students, which often means pushing them away from their education. But we found two schools here in Denver that welcomed them in. Walked away that night in cuffs. Julian wasn't running from police or doing something destructive. He was caught on the roof of his high school. But with a history of drug use, he should have ended up in a juvenile detention center. I had other charges pending and like, if that charge were to get on my record, like a lot of things could have went bad. Ali Zeibel, a juvenile civil rights attorney in Denver, says not every student's story will end that way. My average client is uh, between 14 and 16 years old. I have clients as young as eight. Broad and often harsh discipline policies can push students out of school. I see students being expelled uh, for uh, tagging, for spraying graffiti off school grounds. I see students being expelled for pretty routine playground fights. If you've ever heard the term school to prison pipeline, Jen Jackson, principal at the Academy of Urban Learning, says that's how it starts. Students will go into a detention center and they come out and it's difficult for them to find a school that will take them or has the capacity to like fulfill all of the needs that they may have. Her school, AUL, is there as a trauma-informed alternative high school offering education and support. Basic needs have to be met before you can ask kids to do trigonometry. Julian avoided falling into that pipeline because of the school he was in. And they said, two kids are on the roof of your school. What do you want to do? And I said, don't press charges. Instead, Melissa Mouton fought for him in court. She founded 5280 to help keep recovering teens in school. Who is out there advocating for these kids? Why aren't the schools going to bat for their students? Both educators believe their approach doesn't have to be a last resort. In Denver, Karen Morfitt covering Colorado First.